Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. We're gonna talk about the comic book industry. I know we don't talk about comics nearly as much as we used to these days, but uh, there is some drama around fables and DC Comics. So, you know, we like to talk about drama. So mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about this uh, situation where series creator of fables, uh, Bill Willingham, decided that he was going to release his book into the public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, DC says he's not allowed to do that. And this is over- Of course, DC said he wasn't allowed to. Right, right. So this is uh, this is over a dispute that they are having. We're gonna talk about this, try to I, figure out what's going on. We personally have seen this kind of shit happen by ourselves. Yeah. You know, where these big companies think they own everything even when they do not? Yeah, yeah. So DC says it's gonna, it's gonna fight fight for its trademarks. Uh, but apparently some people are saying that uh, Bill Willingham has the trademarks and he's allowed to do whatever the hell he wants if he's, to do. If it's in his contract, again, we don't have the contract. If it's in his contract that it's 100% creator owned and he owns, he has a final say in everything, they shouldn't be able to do half the stuff they did. And if it's 100% creator owned, he might still have deals with them that he has to honor regarding, you know, if they have things, you have to have so many books or whatever. But he can do whatever he wants with his own property. Yeah. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo! All right, so we're gonna talk about, uh, see here, a little bit of the background according to Screen Rant, and then the recent statement from DC coming from Comics Beat doing the journalism uh, the DC says, no, they're going to fight this. You're not going to be able to well, you release know, it. It sounds like they were threatening him to go ahead and fight and sue them anyway when they weren't giving him basically what he was supposed to be given. Maybe they need to get a war chest for this guy or something. Yeah. I mean, there's never a case for it. This might be it. Oh, absolutely. Um, so this is a Bill Willingham, the creator of Fables, has released the franchise in the public domain, citing a breakdown in his relationship with DC Comics. Uh, who he fired during the ongoing publication of Fable's new continuation. Um, Willingham has shared a press release that reveals his reasons and the details of his acrimonious split from DC. There's a whole, we can read his, his statement here. Yeah, so he put this on his blog, These, these Foolish Games, mm -hmm. and um, he said, yeah, as of now, the 15th of September, the comic book property called Fable's, including all related Fable spinoffs and characters, is now public domain. What was once wholly owned by Bill Willingham is now owned by everyone for all time. It's done. And as most experts will tell you, once done, it cannot be undone. Take backs are neither contemplated nor possible. Why'd you do this? Number of reasons. Thought this over for some time in no particular order. They are practicality. When I first signed my creator-owned publishing contract with DC Comics, the company was run by honest men and women of integrity. Ouch who, for the most part, interpreted the details of that agreement fairly and above board. When problems inevitably came up, we worked it out like reasonable men and women. Since then, over the span of 20 years or so, these people have left or been fired. That's true. A lot of people got mm -hmm. fired from D.C. to be replaced by a revolving door of strangers of no measurable integrity who now choose to interpret every facet of our contract in ways that only benefit D.C. Comics and its owner companies. I can tell you this happens a lot. This does happen a lot. Uh, a lot of times, yeah, people make a handshake deal or something with someone. and then well, This one gets... sounds like a contract, but even then they're trying to say, well, that's not worded super. That's ambiguous. It's ambiguous now, so we can do what we want. Yep. Uh, at one time, the Fables properties were in good hands, and now by virtue of attrition and employee replacement, the Fables properties have fallen into bad hands. And you have to watch that when you sign agreements with publishers or businesses or whatever, you know, it's very possible that that company is going to get sold. It's very possible that they're going to, the person you made the deal with is going to get gone one way or another. Um, so you have to make sure everything is spelled out that they can't say, well, that's ambiguous. So every, we can argue with that it's this. Yeah. Every potential circumstance needs to be accounted for because, because shit happens basically. Since I can't afford to sue DC to force them to live up to the letter and spirit of our longtime agreements, since even winning such a suit would take ridiculous amounts of money out of my pocket and years out of my life, and he's 67, I've decided to take a different approach and fight them in a different arena, inspired by the principles of asymmetric warfare. The one thing in our contract that DC lawyers can't contest or reinterpret to their own benefit is that I am the sole owner of the intellectual property. I can sell it or give it away to whomever I want. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh. Yeah, this is going to get good. Ooh. Like, well, there's nothing to fight over, guys, because anybody can publish this stuff now. I choose to give it away to everyone. If I couldn't prevent fables from falling into bad hands, at least this is a way I can arrange that also falls into many good hands. Since I truly believe there are still more good people in the world than bad ones, I count it as a form of victory. I do also believe there are more wow, good people in the world long. than bad ones. It's okay. very important, though. It's very important. Do you want me to read some of it? Yeah, you can read some of it. Philosophy. In the past decade or so, my thoughts on how to reform the trademark and copyright laws in this country and others, I suppose, have undergone something of a radical transformation. The current laws are a mishmash of unethical backroom deals to keep trademarks and copyrights in the hands of large corporations who can largely afford to buy off, I mean, buy the outcomes they want. Disney, looking at you. <clears throat> Disney. Um, in my template for radical reform of those laws, I would like it if any IP is owned by the original creator for up to 20 years from the point of first publication and then goes to public domain for any and all to use. However, at any time before that 20 year span bleeds out, you, the IP holder, can sell it to another person or corporate entity who can have exclusive use of it for a maximum of 10 years and then it can't be resold when it goes to public domain. Don't agree with that because if I'm somebody and I create something now, I shouldn't have to like give it up in 20 years. You know? yeah, yeah. What if you create something in your early twenties and you're like, right. I, I don't, wanna... I don't agree with that, but yeah. I do think that if someone has the, they, they, they are under contract that they own the exclusive rights, they should keep the rights. And it sounds like they were stepping over his rights for a while. So he goes on about his, his template for reform and, um, we're going to go down here to this next thing. It said, what exactly has DC Comics done to provoke this? Okay, this is where we want to get, it gets good. Too many things to list, but here are some highlights. Throughout the years, my business relationship with DC, with Fables, and with other intellectual properties, DC has always been in violation of their agreements with me. Well, you're in violation. They've been in violation. Shouldn't that terminate it? Yeah. Usually it's in smaller matters like forfeiting to seek my opinion on artists for new stories, for, for covers, or formats for new collections. And those times when called on, they automatically say, sorry, we overlooked you again. It just fell through the cracks. They use fell through the cracks line so often and so reflexively that I eventually had to bar them from using it ever again. <laughs> They're often late reporting royalties. I did hear that, yes. Often under-report royalties, forcing me to go that. after them to pay for the rest of what is owed. Basically what I'm hearing here is stay the hell away from D.C., yeah. Lately, through their practices, they've grown beyond these mere annoyances, prompting some sort of showdown. First, they tried to strong arm the ownership of Fables from me. When Mark Doyle and Dan DiDio first approached me with the idea to bring Fables back for the 20th anniversary, both gentlemen since fired from D.C., during the contract negotiations for the new, new issues, their legal negotiators tried to make it a condition of the deal that we work was done as work for hire, effectively throwing the property irrevocably into the hands of D.C. When that didn't work, their excuse was, sorry, we didn't read your contract going into these negotiations. We thought we owned it. Well, if you have anything in writing like that, you might want to bring it out now. Yeah. More recently, during talks to try to work out our many differences, DC officers admitted their interpretation of our publishing agreement and the following media rights agreement is that they could do whatever they wanted with the property. What? How could they if he 100% owned it? Right, They right. could change stories or characters in any way they wanted. Nope. Oh, and the new people definitely want to do that. Oh, yeah. Can't have them all be in this way. We got to make sure we make some changes to make them more, you know, modern day. Um, they had no obligation whatsoever to protect the integrity and value of the IP either. Um, from themselves or from third parties, because I guess they did a deal with Telltale Games, mm. who wanted to radically alter the character settings, history, and premises of the story. I saw the script they tried to hide from a couple <laughs> years ago. Nor did they owe me any money for licensing the Fables rights to third parties, since wow. such a license wasn't anticipated in an original publishing agreement. Let me get this straight. He owns 100% of yes. the, the it's own, creator owned. He has the creator ownership of it. Yes. He has to have the, in their contract. Apparently they had to run by artists and everything by him, but they can somehow go and license out the property that they don't own to other people. Well, hot damn. I'm going to go license out Harry Potter. I'm going to go license out, um, you know, Mario and some other stuff cash in. I don't have to own it. Apparently, you know, I, I you don't have to own it. They don't, they didn't have the right to do that, but they did it anyway. You can read some. Well, they couldn't have anticipated. I mean, this is this is kind of the issue with what's going on with the strikes. And this is the part of the, the strikes in Hollywood that I actually do agree with because they are trying to hide royalties on streaming and other digital media because when a lot of these deals were cut, the stuff was not even thought of. The video games like Telltale doing a game based on fables was not thought of. But you of know what? Does not matter? At that point in time, they need to go back to the to the deal and be like, okay, we want to license Any and out. all media. We don't have rights to this right. creator owned. You don't have a right to license out something you don't own. Just because you publish it 
doesn't mean you own it. And if you wanted to do that, it should have gone through the, the creator that owned it to make sure that it was uh, you know above board and you didn't do that allegedly. Well, the thing with Telltale is they went out of business. So now they'll probably be like, well, they went out of business and we have well, no way of said, knowing. They yet. said that some of the points at a later conference called Promise Me a Phone to Pay You Back Money's Out, of course, on the phone, yeah. right? For licensing of Fables of Telltale Games. Um, and they would get them a new agreement and they didn't do any of that. And instead yeah. gave them a consulting fee. So they didn't have to admit that it was money they owed. And they wanted him to sign a non-disclosure to get the money that he was owed. Yep. And Sounds you to, familiar. We ran to this with our last partner. Yes. You had to you had to say only nice things. You weren't allowed to say anything critical. And then you know critical. what we did? We said, fuck you, and didn't sign it. We didn't sign it. Nope. Uh, there's so much more. As I said, these are some highlights. It's been a long, debilitating process. Uh, to sue, they, they, Like, look. I mean, look at what happens when you sue DC. Ask the families of the Superman creators. Now what it's decades, is decades. Disney, same thing. They yeah. like they run you out of money, and they do everything they can to to keep uh, they just to be greedy little assholes and whore, and whore everything out and take all the money. And it's like I think they need to do some law changes in regards to this. And I think that they need to start you know having you know the money for people to go after yeah these companies for this kind of stuff. All right. So now, are you concerned with what DC will do? And we're going to talk about that because DC apparently, you know. Oh, they're uh, already starting. Yeah, I gave them years to do the right thing. I tried to reason with them, but you can't reason with the unreasonable. They use these years to make soothing promises, tell lies about how dedicated they were toward working this out, kept dragging things out as long as possible. Uh, I gave them an opportunity to renegotiate the contracts from the ground up, putting everything in unambiguous language, and they ignored the offer. Right, because they want to still say, well, it's ambiguous, so we can do what we want. Right. I gave them the opportunity twice to simply tear up our contracts, and we each go our separate ways. They ignored those off. Well, yeah, because they're making money yeah, on these Yeah, because if books. he has this in writing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work to his benefit. I tried to go over their heads to deal directly with their new corporate masters and maybe find someone willing to deal in good faith, and they all blocked attempts to do so. I tried getting an officer of DC Comics to identify who they report to at the company ladder, I dare you. In any case, without giving them details, I warned them months in advance that this moment was coming. I told them what I was about to do. It would be both legal and ethical. Now it's happened. Uh, his contracts with DC are still in force. He did nothing to break them, and he cannot unilaterally end them. I still can't publish Fables comics through anyone but them. I can't authorize a Fables movie through anyone but them, nor can I license Fables toys or lunchboxes or anything else. They still haven't, they uh, still have to pay me for the books they publish. I'm not giving up the other money they owe. One way or another, I intend to get my 50% of the money they owed me for years for the Telltale game and other things. However, you, the new 100% owner of Fables, never signed such agreements. Ouch. Ouch. For better or for worse, DC and I are still locked together in this unhappy marriage, perhaps for all time, but you aren't. If I understand the law correctly, uh, you have the rights to make your Fables movies, cartoons, and publish your Fables books. Right, but he does add, and you'd skip over that, but be advised, copyright law is a mess, purposely right, right. big and murky. Yes, can confirm that is true. Well, that's that's just it. So it then it becomes an issue of, of copyright and trademark, and then you know DC is probably going to push... The trademark. This is how they're going to maintain know, he has all the, If he has all the proof that you know his contract was 100% creator owned and they were cutting him out of licensing deals, when he has a history, and if he has proof of all the things he's saying, yeah, you know the, the courts can, will, will probably take that into consideration as well. Yeah. So there are a lot of a lot of stories. Um, they talk about other stories piling up. I know Alan Moore wanted his uh, his royalty checks to be sent to charity, and that did not happen. And, uh, Basically, I would say as far away from DC as possible. I would never sign a deal with them. Work for hire is fine, but yeah, if you're going to do something creator owned, this is going to be a problem. So this is uh, this is what DC Comics said according to Comics Beat: the Fables comic books and graphic novels published by DC and the storylines published by DC. And the storylines, characters, and elements therein are owned by DC and protected under the copyright laws of the U.S. and throughout the world in accordance with applicable law and are not in the public domain. DC reserves all right and will take such actions as DC seems necessary. They're trying to threaten. Yeah. Doesn't mean they can. We're going to do what we have to do to protect intellectual property rights. Yeah, um, well, the thing is, if they don't own the intellectual property to begin with... That's the question. It all comes down to what is the contract actually say? Well, okay. So they said the clear statement yet on the copyright issue surrounding the property is uh, copyright filings that DC assigned copyright to Willingham by agreement over the years. So he's on there, but so is DC Comics. Uh, untangling all of this is going to be a long process. So I don't... He made more comments too. Yeah. Several questions important over Fable rights. No, this does not include the right to reprint previously public. No, Fables books and stories. Basically, you make up your own Fables books. Um, 
you have to create your own. You can't reprint the ones that that you know that are already out there, obviously. Yeah. So I mean, this is going to be a problem because I think a lot of people are going to avoid going there because they're like, I don't want to bring legal headaches to my doorstep, you know, and DC might threaten, they might saber rattle, they might something, but even just to answer, you know, to hire a lawyer to answer these people, if they threaten a lawsuit is going to cost you thousands of dollars, Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people, especially if you're a small press or something, you're not going to even, you're not going to go there. But just the fact that he had the balls to be like, yeah, okay, well, fuck you. Yeah, but gonna, <laughs> just listed, DC had themselves listed in the copyright. That is going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. And of course, we've got people. I, I was going to bring this up because they don't like Bill Willingham because he's conservative-ish. And um, this has come up before. Oh, but it would be okay if someone they liked Absolutely. the same thing. You know? See, Absolutely. It, 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 of course, we have to make everything about politics. It's not about politics. It's about what's right and wrong. So they're going through his – so this guy is going oh, through his – his, uh, Tweet history to see what he liked. It's like, come on, come on. Oh boy. Um, former Vertigo editor Stuart Moore also posted a cryptic statement. Why is everyone dumping on Bill? He's publicly or he's publicizing a dispute with a big corporation. I helped review those Vertigo contracts in the early '90s, and they're complicated. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter what you think of the person's politics. Like, I mean, this is why I understand. Like, people that were supposed to be progressive and liberal and stick it to the man and stick it to capitalism are now standing for corporations mm-hmm. time and time and oh, time only again. Only because, only, yeah, mostly because, because, because you're a bigot. Yeah. But so, they won't like corporations when they do it to them. Yeah. And it doesn't, yeah. I mean, it's just like, this is crazy. So, I mean, the fact that he did this, I think is just that I don't know how enforceable it is. But that takes balls to basically. It does take balls. I wouldn't recommend anybody go out and do Fables books because I, I mean I think if DC's name is on the copyright filing, you're gonna get sued. It's probably not worth it. Yeah. But I feel so bad that it came down to this because it will not pay the people. My best, my best suggestion to help him out: don't buy DC anything. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, like right now, if you want to help this guy, don't buy any DC book comics. Oh, don't worry. I think a lot of people stopped buying DC Comics a oh, long I know, time ago. But we definitely yeah. don't. And yeah. then my next comment is, hey, Warner, you're going to let this kind of shit go down? What the hell? Start calling out Warner. But I'm just like, you know, at this point, just don't buy their books. Don't buy my comics. Yeah, people. Yeah, it's it, DC is just done at this point. That's the one thing they really had going for them was Vertigo and create our own stuff and it's just like DC's literally a dead company. Yeah, but the flip point. side it is any other creator. If I say don't buy their books, other creators are going to get screwed too, and they didn't do anything. But they're probably going to get screwed either way. I, I think the smartest thing to do, like this is why you don't see a lot of new superheroes, new characters being created with Marvel and DC anymore, is because of stuff like this. Uh, so many great characters have been added to the DC and Marvel mythos over the years, and so many creators have gotten screwed out of royalties because they've created all these characters and these concepts and these corporations, you know, they take them, they go make a multi-billion dollar movie and they kick you over a check for Mm $5,000, you know, and that's, that's, that's it. And if you're going to enter an agreement, get a copyright attorney to look over the said agreement to make sure there's nothing ambiguous because I, we've had agreements and we have a copyright attorney and he looks over it and he sees that this is ambiguous. We need to have this clarified. And we've actually gone back to people that wanted to deal with us and they had to clarify things and it was no problem because they're on the up and up. But if they're not in the up and up, then they'll balk at that. But uh, you shouldn't, if they really legitimately aren't out to screw you, they shouldn't balk at clarification. No, nope. So anyway, let's wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.